Good morning, everybody. Hey Squid, good morning. Good morning, good morning. I'm just busy drawing these levels here. One one that will be important is the close from a couple days ago because that's a gap that never got filled. Johnny, good morning. Asking, would I consider the recent move up a triple test off the bottom of the small range? Um, yeah, you, you could look at it that way. I wouldn't say it was a setup that I could necessarily take. Uh, well, let's let's take a look at it a little bit closer. It looks like it already had a break in you high. Maybe if you have this secondary channel drawn, um, you could consider that a triple test. And it is technically a second entry. I just don't like that we're right at that uh, resistance level. We we're closing in on yesterday's high. Yeah, it definitely looks like a secondary channel from both indices this morning. Hey, coffee. NASDAQ is already above the previous day's high. We'll see where a gap fill is.
All right, so there's the gap above us. And this overnight move went right off of yesterday's low. We'll, we'll see if this has the juice to actually break out of this range, uh, yesterday's range. So far, it looks like it. Hey, Jesse, morning. Closing in on the previous day high here. Of course, like I said, on the NASDAQ, we were already above it. Uh, pretty good signs uh, for some bullish behavior today. But do keep in mind that this pattern often gets smacked down. A overnight kind of range structure followed by a move up. Oftentimes, we'll just have a a break, you know, once we come to test this trend line. So watch for that. Morning, those of you just jumping in. Happy whatever day is it? Thursday already? My goodness. Tomorrow's the last day of the week. There is no way that can be the case. <laughs> this week has flown by.
Hey, good morning, Cricket. So here we go, we're coming down to that support right now. Did not quite test the previous day's high, and like I said, this pattern will often fail, so I wouldn't trust this trend line. Uh, be very cautious there. Could work, of course. Um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't bank my children's future on it. You know what I mean? I wouldn't yellow my grandmother's savings. Good morning, Solo. Good to have you. Everything looks good on my end, so not sure what's going on there. Morning, Gene. Happy Thursday.
Hey, Shaq. Good morning. Back to it, eh? Well, you missed a couple of crazy days, that's for sure. Hey, Fury. Hey Jeff, good morning. Yes, good luck to good luck to all today. Literally, may the odds be in your favor. <laughs> May the trading force be with you. All right, guys. So we are six minutes away from the open. And we already got through the core PPI number this morning. Unemployment uh, was down under what was forecasted which is great just in general for our economy uh, PPI came in pretty much about what they're predicting um, so yeah as far as news goes we do have a little bit of fed speak at 10 a.m. good buddy Barkin is gonna be talking uh, you know it's not not as crazy as if it was gonna be j power or something but you never know. You never know. It's something to watch for. So around 10, we will consider that at least um, in our trades. And then we do have bond auctions going down at 1 p.m. So that is something to watch for this afternoon. Sorry to hear that, Fury. Yeah, those those panic losses, no bueno. I'd recommend if that's something that you... And, and by the way, thank you for letting us all in on that. Um, yeah, you don't have to share, but it really helps people out uh, the more honest we can be. Um, and to everyone, if you do, if that is one of your issues, we all have our trading demons, right? If one of yours is getting out of something because you get scared, trading scared in general, uh, I'd recommend, first of all, sizing down. Um, if you have appropriate sizing, you won't be scared to take a loss on a trade because it's it won't affect your account, right? So that's one thing. So make sure you size down. And then the other is plan your trade ahead of time and just like set it and forget it right okay if it gets to this level it's invalidated i'll take profit here put those in put your orders in and just let it do its thing
Yeah, often if you're trading with fear, it's it's usually a size issue. Three minutes to the open now. Hey Tom, my man, my man. Keeping us honest over here. You're not smashing that like button. Are you even a trader, bro? Market open in one minute. We do have a second entry long forming, uh, but I will not be taking it right at the open here. Already, I don't trust this channel very much. Plus the market open. If this is the uh, A plus, super good looking setup, um, a no brainer, if you will, I'd take it, but otherwise I'd rather not. Um, ride out the market open. There we go. Market is open. Looks like that trade might have worked depending on what you were going for. If you're just doing a quick little scalp, it filled. If you're going for any larger targets, uh, these red bars are exactly why I wanted to wait. Yeah, this is a very key area here. This is the top of yesterday's range. So important that we either confirm above it or below it. And that will help us with our market direction this morning. like the Nasdaq might be headed down here getting some red bars <clears throat> and if th this wasn't on the market open I actually kind of like this for a short here right at resistance weak channel moving up break out of this pullback and continuation if we weren't at market open i'd probably give that a try and basically bet that we would be going we wouldn't get a new high before we go the same distance down so that'd be the target right here On the Nasdaq, it definitely looks like it could go down quite a bit. Um, it's been leading the way on this move down.
All right, NASDAQ having a pullback after that move down. We'll see if it retests. And good to note that the NASDAQ did bounce off of the previous day's high. So this is basically the top of yesterday's range. So if we can confirm above that level, uh, we have a chance of filling up the, the gap from a couple days ago. So the NASDAQ so far doing that. Um, the ES is not, we are down below that range I. Check, I have a question for you. Uh, you, you trade mean reversion, um, which is something that I've never done. Um, do you have to be really cautious on trending days? Like, do you have to identify trending days pretty early and just completely kind of stay out of it? Or does that not affect you? Do you just still trust that you'll get back to the, the mean? Sincere question, because I've never, never really traded, not my style. Don't really want to trade it, but I'm just curious uh, as someone who does. NASDAQ pretty strong, initially weak compared to the S&P and now it is leading the way up. This often happens at the market open, the NASDAQ especially trying to find its footing. Once it settles in, uh, we can get a better read. All right, yes, with a break and new low of this move down. There you go, you have the channel. There's the break, there's the new low. interesting to see if the Nasdaq also follows suit and gets a new low of this downtrend here relative strength on the Nas for sure it looks like it wants to make a new high of this secondary channel and again it is above yesterday's high so good outlook on the Nasdaq so far Gotcha, Shayak.
Nas below the EMA. S&P kind of looks like it's forming a base here. Maybe start it to move up. This uh, secondary channel still does technically need a new high. All right, finally the Nasdaq moving down, got a new low of that downtrend. And testing that prior day high. So if the Nasdaq starts to get below this level and close below it, um, we are likely either going to be range bound or bearish. But we really, we have to be above the previous day's high To think bullish at all. NASDAQ bouncing back up. trying to make a new high it looks like but the S&P is pretty weak compared to the NAS so I don't know if the NAS will have the juice to get up there Nasdaq trying to get above that little swing high. And EMA continuing to reject on the ES for sure, Johnny. We'll see what that looks like, Tom widening the channel with an overshoot. 
could be. Not really acting like an overshoot with this move down now, but that, man, that fits really well. Looking at some other markets, um, not seeing anything super interesting to me. Um, the Russell 2000, quite relatively strong to the market. It's pretty much just consolidating on the high while the ES is screwing around with this downtrend. Gold has a nice uptrend, it's pretty choppy though. Not really strong by any means. like the S&P might get a new low here. Nasdaq with a lower high, confirming a second entry short. Not anything that I would take because this downtrend already had a break in a new low, so not really expecting. Yeah, we don't have a channel that we're waiting on getting retested, but with that said, some nice resistance across here and a second entry short right off that resistance. Maybe that's enough for someone to take that short. Triple test off that resistance, second entry short. I just don't like how we are still above the previous day's high. This kind of look 
looking a range like Yep, um, Barking is speaking in five minutes. Thanks for that reminder, or 10 minutes rather, sorry. Um, I don't think it's gonna be market moving, but anytime you have Fed speak, they can always say something out of the blue. You never know, right? Um, the, the institutional algorithms for sure are gonna be tuned into what he's saying, and if there's anything that is perhaps outside of expectations or he says something off the wall could certainly move the market. All right, finally getting that move up on the S&P. Looks like NASDAQ wants to break that little swing high and go and form a new high of that channel. Expecting that to go down. Meanwhile, we can identify this move up on the S&P. Right now we're at this little resistance. No bueno if we can't get over that. Bit of a range form in here.
And I'm muted. <laughs> uh, we're still in this range on the S&P, and as long as we stay below the previous day's range highs, we will stay bearish. The NASDAQ very strong right now, so that has me thinking we might get above it. Russell 2000 again is strong as well. All right, Fury later. Enjoy work as much as that is scientifically possible. Nice rejection off the top of that mini range. Well, if this is all we got for the S&P, this is not going to be fun, guys. Right now, we're in a four-point range. Can't really get out of it. Um, I don't think we'll stay there. The, the market has been too volatile. It wants to move. It wants to go somewhere.
NASDAQ still working it its way towards that new high in a very choppy, ugly manner. Finding a bit of resistance right there on that swing. The ES not looking like it wants to get up there. Projecting off the high of this little mini range, we might get a downtrend that starts to form. All right, got that downtrend starting. And the NASDAQ 2 is right on that previous day's high, right at that support. Again, if it starts to confirm below, we're going to be bearish. See if we can get a pullback on the ES with the NASDAQ confirming. Hey Daryl, sorry I didn't see your, your message there. Good morning to you. Later, Gene. Yeah, one thing you can do guys, if the candles are really big, again, just size down. Take the same trades you would, increase your targets a little bit, and just size down. You wouldn't want to miss trading opportunities just because you have big candles. Oftentimes, the the best market conditions are when it's just really pumping, the moves are really big, the candles are really big. So that's how I would be, that's how I would look at it rather than just not trading at all. Getting that pullback on the ES and would love to sell it, but the NASDAQ so far is finding support on the previous day's high. Didn't quite get back to the EMA on that. Uh, S&P pullback. We also don't have a second entry yet. Technically you do have a little, little baby entry right here. Uh, but I wouldn't count that. I'm pretty much just looking at this as the bottom.
and I won't be taking the short on the S&P because the NASDAQ is still above the previous day's high. Unless all of a sudden it confirms below that. What's up, Penguin Lord? A bond trader, huh? That's old school. That's super old school. Yeah, I mean, lately the bond trading has been really good uh, because there's been such a flight to bonds with inflation and all that. So it's not usually the case that the... Uh, when they release new notes that the market's volatile that has been the case the last several months with the with the conditions so yeah conditions have lent themselves to that Okay, NASDAQ again testing that area. Can we get below the previous day high? Let's see, we'll see if this is a false breakout or not. S&P getting a nice move down. Just for kicks and giggles, seeing if there's any massive channel. <laughs> Oh snap, NASDAQ's back above that level. False breakout, trapping those early shorts, trapping those breakdown traders. Penguin likes that slow pay stuff. Have I got the stuff for you, Penguin? It's called public radio, AM radio. Seems like it would be your, your vibe. <laughs> I think bond trading and AM radio fanship go hand in hand. All right, well, the S&P, I do have this wider channel drawn. It's, it, you know, I'm not trusting it, to be honest, because the NASDAQ continues to push up. So 
this would be my first instinct would be that we already have a new low and then we're going to bounce but we'll see i'm just throwing this out just in case Okay, NASDAQ tried to get back above that level and now we are going down. So now that the NASDAQ is below the previous day's high, we can trust the short a little bit more. But exactly, Johnny, yesterday's low is right here. I think I have it marked correct, yeah. We still haven't quite got there, but we are very close right below us. So once we get there, we're not going to be able to take a short. This might be kind of like yesterday, one of those these big ranges. Gold looking like a pretty good short right now. Been in a really slow, nasty looking uptrend and looking like it's losing strength. Russell 2000 is a very interesting chart. It's just slowly drifting downwards. Um, looks like a super long bull flag, a long drawn out bull flag that you're like, is this even a bull flag anymore? Yeah, Johnny, that is the difficulty with really big ranges. Like you, you have to have such a big move to get from one side or the other. And then by the time you do, you're like, man, I don't want to sell against this move. Feels wrong. Definitely a hard structure to trade. We haven't quite got to the bottom of this, so I still could consider a short on the S&P. We'll see how the EMA responds here. Oops, still don't even have our first entry quite yet. Looks like it's gonna be coming up here though. Okay, there's that first entry. See if we can pull back to the EMA and get another one. Right here, we want one more little pullback and a second entry to get short.
By the way, we do have a bear cross forming on the 1OP indicator for both the NASDAQ and the S&P. I did end up taking that short on gold and it is about to go to target. I'm going to start trailing my stop here in a minute. Sweet. Locking in profits on gold, trailing my stop. not locking in profits but guaranteeing profits on the trade if that makes sense up five points now Holy cow, the thing is really running. Sage says, took the breakout retest of the range bottom on NASDAQ, wrote it down to the overnight open, nice. Nice. Got stopped in profit there on gold. Took like, how many points is that? Six, almost seven points. Pretty solid trade. Um, Yeah, Sage, I would have liked that breakout retest of the range bottom too. I just didn't like how it went back above. You had the breakout right here and then on the retest it actually went back above that level I would have joined you probably if it would have been like that right and it only made it back to the very level on the retest instead of going back above it but it's all good it's all good So on the S&P, we are now officially at yesterday's low. So we do want to pause on shorts there.
on the Nasdaq, we still have quite a ways to go before the previous day's low. Right now, we are just in the middle of this nasty range. We might start chopping around. <laughs> There's not really like an air pocket to go through except here. We could move pretty quick through that, that area. Usually you see big straight up and down moves like that. There's like a volume imbalance. So um, yeah, if we come back through that again, it could be a pretty quick move down. But so far it's getting supported and the ES is moving up here right off the previous day low. And this could be the start, ladies and gentlemen, of a big nasty range. All right, guys, gonna do a little poll here. Wanna know what you think the structure for the day is going to be. Bullish, a bearish, or big nasty range? Those are our options. It's been pretty bearish. It's been pretty bearish. We made it all the way down here. This could continue. And if we get below we get below this area I mean sayonara we could have a massive drop or this could be a big bear trap I mean everyone has seen the selling in the last couple of days right this is the daily chart everyone has seen these big red daily candles now we're down below it there's probably a lot of shorts here they could easily just get trapped to the upside We could start to see a massive rip. What do we think, guys? Cast your votes. Let your voice be heard. It's a battle right now between bearish and big nasty range. There's a couple permables in there. Oh, 
Oh, bears are taking the lead. 50% of people now say the structure is going to be bearish for the day. Okay, Michael Burry just entered the chat. All right, we're gonna close the poll. So last chance to cast your votes. And then I'll let you know where I stand. Sixty one percent bearish now. Wow, okay. Well, Michael Burries, we'll see. Uh, my vote is going to be for big, nasty range. We have certainly been bearish, but um, the NASDAQ, not so much. So the ES is like right on that support level. And certainly if we break through that, we're gonna hit an air pocket. We're gonna go down, we're gonna go down hard. Uh, but right now seeing a bit of strength in the NASDAQ, making me think that maybe there's a little bit of uh, imbalance in the market. Um, not all, the battle has not been won on either side. So I do think that we're gonna continue in this big nasty range I'm not gonna get married to that idea right uh, anything can happen in the market I would be gladly proven wrong if we can start to get a trend but that's where I'm at right now big nasty dump that's what I took this morning. I mean, what? Hey, Toad. <laughs> Good morning. NASDAQ is having a little breakout of that channel. Likely needs a retest, but might not do that.
We do have a bullish cross forming on the one OP. So this could be the start of a bullish correction. I'll show you guys that so you can see it. Here's the one OP on ES. You can see bullish cross starting to move up. Now, if this goes all the way up, if the if the um, one OP goes all the way up and then crosses bearish before we get anything going, that would be a very bearish sign um, if we don't get a pop here. That's that on S&P. Here it is on the NASDAQ. You can see a bullish cross on both. It actually crossed a little bit ago. So we had a bit of a warning right, right here that, hey, we might get a pop. And so far we're popping. Straight popping. Incredibly powerful indicator. I might, you know, I used to actually just trade using it. Um, it's been a while. I just kind of use it for confirmation now, but stuff like this makes me think, man, maybe I should get back into that. Because I was doing that several years ago when I didn't have nearly as much experience and skill as I do now. So I kind of, you know, at that, that point, I was still kind of bouncing around from thing to thing. All right. Um, yes, now has two measured legs up. My feeling is this is the start of a little bit larger correction but you could also look at it just by the book as two legs of bullish correction and now we continue with the bearish move this channel in fact does have a break we would expect a new low to be formed so we'll see Nice, I had banner day for you, that's great.
Still waiting to see what's gonna happen here. Kind of caught between two different theses. One being that we have this downtrend, has a break, typically would look for a new low. But the other is that we are bouncing off of um, the previous day's low, range-like structure, bullish 1OP cross, might continue the movement back up. That's what I'm leaning towards for sure. But if we get a really bearish setup all of a sudden, um, I'll look to that. NASDAQ might have a secondary channel going. Man, I should have trailed my stop a little bit looser on that gold short. We're still going down on the gold on gold futures. Uh, Penguin, I could. Um, a while ago, I, I used to show all my charts because I do sometimes trade other tickers, uh, crude oil, gold, the Russell. Um, I asked people in here. I did, I did several polls uh, to see if people were interested in that, um, but most everyone wanted me to focus on just the S&P and the NASDAQ. So I'll call out those trades and say what I'm looking for, but I don't usually spend a lot of time on them just because there's not as much interest. You know, it's kind of like if I was trading bonds, people, not everyone wants to watch that. Most everyone, yeah, I mean the, the ES futures and NASDAQ futures are the two most popular instruments, so. Back on the ES, still moving up. That bullish cross is for sure producing. And this looks like the kind of wide channel on the S&P that could fail really easily. So if this continues to be really choppy, and then let's say we get a bearish cross, and maybe the NASDAQ is moving down. This might be a good short here.
Well, hopefully we can get something more than this choppy action. Not really down for that today. Not, you know what I mean, guys? Not really down for sitting through some chop. The fact that we can't get through the previous day's low or the previous day's high. That is the literal definition of an inside day. And it looks like that big nasty range is going to be the winner. Sorry, all those who voted for a bearish day so far, not looking like it's going to happen. All you Michael Burries out there should have seen the big nasty range coming. Uh, penguin, sure, yeah. Um, definitely shared in here numerous times before, but don't mind doing it again. I should make a video so that I don't have to always answer the same questions. Uh, that that's actually a good idea. Making videos, making videos of all the frequently asked questions, so I can just point people to it. Anyway, um, been involved in the markets for many years, mostly like just long-term investments, kind of swing trading type stuff. Uh, about four years ago is when I was really decided to, to, to really get into day trading, um, read everything I could, did research, um, read all the books that you can think of, all the popular ones. Um, was fortunate enough to, to be a part of the one option community, learning how to trade stocks, uh, is a community I still recommend if that's your deal and that's the indicator I use from from there I'm still a moderator in that chat um, but anyway um, got into price action then shortly after that it's been uh, several years of doing that and yeah uh, just learning a bit every day a lot of screen time I was fortunate enough to have a job No, you're fine, Penguin. Don't worry. Um, yeah, I was fortunate enough to have a job while I was learning, so I was able to spend every single day in front of the charts. Like I was, had a job where I could work remotely and didn't take too much of my mental energy, uh, so I could keep keep a chart up all day. Um, and yeah, screen time, man. The the more screen time you can get, the better off you'll be. That's why I really recommend everyone. Um, even if you are able to sit through the market to go review historical charts i still do practice i have a separate screen over here that when the market gets slow i'll go over there and do some practice study charts um and that that's probably the number one thing that's propelled me forward so anyway i'll give you a little idea The top G. Hey, Chess. Been a minute. Good to see you. Trading almost every day, but late hours. Dude, sales job. Yep, 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 yep. Been there, my friend. Been there.
only work weekends so you're able to day trade that's nice nice setup you got there you guys hiring <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, the tempo has been set for the day. Don't expect any big moves. Likely will be stuck between yesterday's low, yesterday's high. However, um, there should be some good opportunities in between. Because you have such a big range, um, it gives lots of room to be able to have good bullish trades on the way up and good bearish trades on the way down. So yes, likely a range for the day, but there should be some good opportunities on either side. And I'm going to be looking for those the rest of the day in the discord. Those of you who are part of that group, see you over there. For everyone else, again, that is what I'd be looking for. Um, don't get married to one side. Be flexible. And of course, if we do get a big move uh, below either the previous day low 
only look for shorts. If we get above the previous day high, only look for longs. And that is going to do it for me this morning, folks. So I hope you have a wonderful day. Trade safe, stay patient, and I'll see you next time. Take care.